today what we're going to talk about first, I guess uh, we've seen some activity, um, well, we've been reporting on activity related to brute force attacks and RDP. We're going to yet do that again today when we talk about the internet weather. But uh, John, there was uh, something that came out from Kaspersky on this. Right. So Kaspersky released a report basically saying that they recently added into part of their tool set the ability to detect uh, remote desktop protocol brute force attacks, which a brute forces attack is when you know a specific IP address is repeatedly trying to password guess its way into a system. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they recently added this uh, into their tool set to detect it. Lo and behold, they discovered, wow, there's a lot of this going on, which mm -hmm. really isn't a surprise to us. We've kind of been reporting this uh, off and on for the past several years. Mm -hmm. We know that not only are there actors out there who are specifically um, trying to uh, get into remote desktop servers, uh, but there's other worms out there, like the Mordo worm is still out there mm -hmm. um, taking over machines. And it even has a very small list of usernames and passwords it uses, but you know, it's the law of you know, supply and demand. If there's enough of them out there, eventually you'll hit one of them that's got a weak password and get in. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess the interesting things or things that they noticed from their analysis, and maybe this is because Kaspersky is a Russian company, uh, that most of the activity that they saw was picked up from Russia and the United States. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there was one, I think it was Turkey maybe, somewhere around there, uh, right. was like the next highest. And then some of the other European countries kind of filled out the rest, but in the large part, you know, US and uh, Russia accounted for most of the brute force RDP type activity they mm -hmm. saw. I took a quick slide uh, to look at our activity, and you might have one as well. I don't know if you did this for our weather report, but it kind of shows, this is a, a two-year scan, so this is a pretty mm -hmm. long term. And like I said, we've been talking that for many years that RDP has been scanned continuously. Um, and this is the number of scans. So we're seeing around between two to 3,000 on a daily basis, uh, regular scanning. There was a noticeable dip, which I, ba I backtracked that to pretty recently, um, you know, 514, 2014, yeah, 514. So it was about a month and a half ago. I didn't get a chance to figure out why that was, why that significant dip, but actually decreased by maybe a, a two thirds or so. It's about a third mm -hmm. of what it actually used to be. Um, but I'm not sure why that is. All right. I wouldn't rest on your laurels. Uh, I would still protect <laughs> all my RDP machines or probably not have them on the internet if I could avoid it or certainly block or filter access to them because uh, mm -hmm. you know, that type of stuff is uh, devices you don't want people to get into. Yeah, I uh, think it's reasonable to point out here as well that you're looking at scan sources here, which sure. is not necessarily an indicator of how many probes that you might get. And once they find an accessible RDP server, it does not indicate how many times you're going to actually try to hit that, that device. Although the, the number of source addresses does have some kind of a bearing on how well they can hide the fact that it's the same actor coming in perhaps multiple times. What you want a system to do is, after a few guesses, lock them out. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to generally be locked out by IP address. If they've been locked out by IP address and come back you know, with another of maybe a, a few thousand in the repertoire, they can get an awful lot of guesses in before they're actually locked out. Right, right. So uh, that's one of the threats associated with these botnets performing these brute force attacks is that it gives them an awful lot of opportunity to do things. And they could be even hitting the same server in parallel. And I think from what I understand or what I remember, RDP by default does not have any kind of uh, back off kind of thing or, you know, mm -hmm. after a certain number of invalid attempts, it doesn't really stop you. So they can kind of keep going on and on. Right. So you uh, have to trying. do something in front of it and to, right, right. to protect it. So, you know, long story short, we say this all the time, filter access to your RDP servers, use mm -hmm. strong passwords. Most of these are using, you know, a password lists that are relatively simple to guess and that's where they have the most success. So the more complex your password is, the better and uh, certainly filtering access to only the people who need to access that you know, device is the way to go. Absolutely. And it, it's a little difficult to see on this graph, but we had observed earlier that the amount of drop that you observed on May 15th or May 14th mm -hmm. was right around the same amount of drop. We saw a little bit of a hole in activity back in right around the beginning of November, late yeah, October. Yeah, right around November. You can kind of, of see that sliver in there still, right. but it's a little bit harder when I got the two-year chart up. What that suggests to me is it's basically one actor set that's 
associated with that particular set of activity. That's a reasonable proportion of the activity is a, a, a particular actor set, a botnet, perhaps they lost command and control, the system's down for a little while, they're working on recovering it. In this case, since it's persisted for a little bit, perhaps maybe there was some kind of a takedown or something that we're not acutely aware of at the moment, or maybe they've gone on, uh, you know, off to look for something else. Right, right. All right, good deal.